Hey everyone, Courant here welcoming you back to Wild Arms. In the last episode, we made our way through the book Dela Metallica in search of the Hades rune to try to rescue Rudy. Now, we're here in Adelheid having done some shopping. As you see, I have plenty of money now. And now in essence, what we're going to do is make our way out of Adelheid and back into the L dimension so that we can hopefully get Rudy all fixed up. So I'm just going to go ahead and teleport over to the forest mound, which is nice. We can just go straight to it. And then we shouldn't be too long in being able to go to where we need to go. So just run up here and not run into tree trunks. And then off we go. All right, so one or two things that I'll mention in regards to some stuff that's gone on in between now and the last time I recorded videos. Um, I had a listener suggest, actually, when I got out into the world map, to use the magic map to show you the land of the L Dimension. And I will actually teleport over to Vassin's lab before I do that, because I want to go ahead and be in place before everything finishes up there. And this is, in essence, the last time that we're really going to be here in the L Dimension, because once we come out of here, we're really not going to need to worry about it too much. So, let me go ahead and pull the magic map up for you, so you can see everything. And you see, it's a pretty fair chunk of land. Uh, there are the main continent, of course. Then there are a couple of islands there that you see. We're not able to get to them, unfortunately, because we can't really pull up the ocarina we can't use that here you try to it's grayed out so we can't use the golem to travel around anywhere and we're not really gonna be able to travel to those other lands elsewhere but you can kind of see of course across the way there you can see one of the islands and you can see the other one as you're over at the forest mound and in that neck of the woods so without further ado let's go ahead and head into Vassam's lab and see if we can rescue Rudy now of course we've gotten the Guardian of Illusion, and we've gotten the Guardian of Life together, so we just head downstairs, and we see Vassim here. The two powers of the Guardians are together again, the Life Force and the Illusion. I am unleashing the Forbidden Powers. Am I making a terrible mistake again? No, not this time. The Guardian Blade will be forged. It's the weapon capable of saving the future, the Guardian Blade. Alright, so it looks like things are getting a bit better here. At least, Vassum is more confident that he is doing the right thing this time. And the surgery took the better part of the day. So, yeah, we're talking a long, long time here. I've done all I can. Now we'll see how he holds up. Alright, so here we are. And one thing I would advise you to do before you go too far forward is go into Cecilia's inventory and, well, actually what I would recommend in this battle is to try to prevent status effects from hitting you broadside in the face. Go ahead and de-equip the Necronomicon if you have it. Put on a full Libra so that you don't have to worry about anything that this next little event can toss at you, hint, hint. And also, I've got the Triton rune equipped on Cecilia. I'm going to switch it out for the Saint rune. Because the enemy that we're about to face is privy to no elements except holy. So we want to be as well prepared for that as possible. Here's the Hades rune just in case you know want to know where it is. We're not going to equip that just yet. I will probably show that off later on. So now with that, I want to help. I want to make him better. I feel so helpless. My heart aches for him. And if we go talk to Vassim, I have done all I can. It's up to him now. Alright, so let's go up and see how Rudy is doing. Don't close your heart, Rudy. You are who you are. You're one of us. Ever benevolent and invulnerable. Where am I? Dreaming? No, this isn't my dream. It's someone else's dream.
Rudy, hurry, come here! Yep, this is indeed Rudy's dream. And apparently he is on the other side of a, a chase fest. This is an unfamiliar landscape. This is Rudy's dream. That child is Rudy? So this is his childhood. The situation made Rudy's mind go back to his childhood. The childhood in his heart is the world where old man Zeppet protects him. I'm going to be a dream chaser when I grow up. Like Rudy? No, I'm going to be a better dream chaser. I'll be traveling alone, not with my grandpa. Check this out. Impossible. A kid can't lift that. Rudy can't do it either. It's a draw. And he lifts it effortlessly. No way. That's impossible. Rudy isn't normal. I know. I know. Rudy has no parents. Rudy's probably a monster child. And that, in essence, is where it starts. Rudy! And there is Zeppet. What happened, Rudy? Are you alone again? Huh? Do you want to know why you're different from the others? So, you're old enough to think about such things. I think I'm lost in Rudy's dream. He must turn to his memories with old man Zeppet when his feelings are hurt. Being with the old man must be relaxing for Rudy. Oh, that's a really nice sunset. This power you have. There must be a reason why you were chosen to possess it. Hmm. This is a little difficult to explain. Let me put it to you this way. You feel pain when someone hits you, right? The same thing happens with people's hearts. Your heart hurts when something sad happens. You can understand those hard feelings better than other children. Someone like you will need the power to protect people in the future. You must practice with your arm and sword until that time comes. I will say, this is probably, this may very well be my favorite scene in the game. Because it's really here that you see Rudy not just as a silent protagonist, but you really see him as a human being. And of course, the irony is, technically, he's not. However, you see just how much his heart, just how much his desire, his passion to protect people, it really makes him human, in spite of the fact that he is an android, that he is a machine. Real power is the power to protect what's dear to you. Rudy's kindness comes from his understanding of people's hard feelings, not only the old man's teachings. Now I understand. The constant pain he has within his artificial body has taught him mercy. I know you're scared, Rudy. Just hang in there. You are not afraid of the demons. Your fear is pointed inwards. You are Rudy, our dear friend. Don't deny yourself. Whoa, what is Siegfried doing there? Was Rudy's village attacked by Siegfried? I, I don't know, it's hard to tell. Don't look away from what hurts you. This is an illusion generated from your own heart. It's easy to run away, but that won't solve anything. Rudy, come out and face it. Okay, well, I guess my own question was answered there. <laughs> and then there's Zeppet again. What's the matter? Why are you in a hurry? You bumped into something so bad you wanted to run away? Don't worry. I'll get rid of anything that will hurt you. You can always come to me. Rudy! Don't close your heart! Always stay here, Rudy. 
Don't listen to anything else. Just listen to me. Everyone is waiting for you. Jack, Hanpan, Jane, McDowan, Professor Emma, the Captain, even Mariel. And me. Rudy is Rudy. You are no one else but our dear friend. I know being with old man Zeppet is comfortable for you, but that's an ancient memory. This is an illusion. The old man is dead. Shut up, you noisy little brat. Zeppet? I'm never going to let this kid go. I've never met someone with such a beautiful heart. I am Elizabeth. I'm a devil, a devil, a devil who eats dreams. Sorry, that was me trying to say devil and demon in the same word. So you're the one keeping Rudy's mind closed. If you want him, you'll have to beat me first. I wonder if a noisy brat like you could do that. So, we have a boss battle inside of Rudy's brain, I guess. Welcome to Elizabeth, who looks really... Uh, weird, twisted, catty, almost, with strange claws and big hands and such. Anyhow, I'm going to start off by actually protecting... No, I'm going to slow her down first. Let me slow her down so that I can make sure that she has the second turn of us. Although it looks like that may not have been necessary anyway. Oh well, whatever. Doesn't hurt to try. Flash Bomb, I think, will actually give me Flash, although that's not really going to be that big of a deal. I didn't do that, but it sure did hurt. Okay, uh, I will go ahead and let's see. I'm actually going to use Shell, which I've not used yet, just to limit her magic attacks. I think she has both magic and physical. Alrighty, and next turn is <laughs> definitely healing time. Now, to some degree, the fact that I took off the Necronomicon is going to... Boy, yeah, definitely going to hurt a little bit. And now I'm going to get hit with evil, and... Well, that didn't hurt too bad. Okay, let me devote another turn to curing. And then I should be close, actually, to being able to unleash High Guardian, and then using that accordingly. Alrighty, you and your dang flash bomb. Come on, quit doing that. Alright, well, okay, with that, I can do High Guardian, but I'd rather not at the moment, because if I do that, I risk, well, I risk dying, basically. So, let me go ahead and put that, and Zero Armor Attack. Okay, there comes the physical attack I thought was on its way. And, yeah, I've got enough where I can go ahead and High Guardian with the Saint Rune. Alright, I own power. Go to work, buddy boy. Let's see what old Centaur can do here. Wow, lots of fiery saint waves, and... That, okay, that didn't hurt nearly as much as I thought it would, darn it. Oh well. Anyway, uh, basically the order of the day here is to try to keep your magic up and hit Elizabeth with whatever attacks that you can spare, to the point that I may actually end up... I don't know, I may end up actually tossing out a Mega Berry if my hit points get too low. Although I've only got four of them, I can't really do that too much. Let's see. Hmm. Well, that's not going to help either. Uh, let me see about tossing... Huh. Well, let me see about tossing Holy at her as an attack and see if it does any good. Nah, not really. Okay. Now, this Flash Bomb is going to have me pretty close to the edge. Oh, wow. Almost at the edge. Okay. All right, in that case, I think, let's see, let me do, let me actually use one of those Megas, since it actually will help. And I think we're going to pretty soon be getting access to more of them, so I can actually spare the effort a little bit. All right, that stupid armor attack. All right, High Guardian again, and toss Ion Power at you. The thing with Elizabeth is she absorbs almost all well, not absorbs, but she absorbs evil, and she nullifies almost all of the other status, not status, magic attacks, rather. So it makes her rather tough to game plan against as far as doing any sort of real magic damage to her. Of course, well, 
physical damage isn't going to be all that great either. So you'll want to be careful as far as how you will want to go about attacking her. See if Drain will do me any good. I actually did okay. Now, had I not put the full Libra on myself right now, my Goose may very well have been cooked. And cooked severely, because that silence attack would have nipped me right in the wrong side of the bud. But, fortunately, now that just ends up basically being a, a wasted attack for all intents and purposes. Ah, uh, let's see, huh. I don't think I've done Rainbow yet. I don't really see that this is going to do a whole lot of good to her. But, you know, it's a free turn. I might as well just go ahead and toss it around anyway. Just so that you can see what it looks like. Okay, yeah, it healed her a little bit, but not too much. So, I don't feel too terribly guilty. <laughs> Alright, let me heal up with another Potion Berry. And then I will toss my own power at her again. I think next turn or two, if I get a free turn or two, I might end up trying out, say... I don't know, I might try out a racer or something like that, just to see what those look like and give a taste as to whether those would actually do anything. But for now, let's go ahead and lean on the Centaur, because really he is the, he is ultimately the source of damage in this battle. And I'm going to need to heal again after this one. Yep, all right. Let's, all right. Whoops, not heal Barry. There we go, okay and see what she has to throw at us this time. We've already pretty well seen most all of her attacks, and she leans a lot on that zero armor, which prevents the protect spell from being much of anything. All right, let's try Eraser. I don't think Eraser will do much good, if any, but I, well, just let you see it anyway. Okay, yeah, I think all that really does is erase any positive effects that an enemy puts on themselves. So, eh, it's a little bit of a wasted turn, but still, at least you got to see it. <laughs> Alright, heal up again, and I should have another Ion Poway in stock. I believe after another one or two uses of it, I think we should be good to go, because she doesn't have a huge amount of hit points, but I also don't want to... Ooh, nah, that's a little too close. I'll heal one more time. I also don't want to try to make it to where this is going to last terribly long, because yes, we're... Uh, Getting close to the end of it, relatively close, but we haven't taken her out just yet. Haha, you're not gonna work because I'm prepared for you. Nah. Alright, now we can unleash High Guardian and see how much this does. Hello again, Centaur. You and I are gonna be fast friends by the end of this battle, I think. Come on, double, er, 2000, 2000. Well, oh, almost. Eh, not too bad. All right, and zero armor, doggone it, I really just do not like that. Okay, next up is, huh, all right, uh, actually, I wonder how Valkyrie would do. I'll, I'll just try that, because I can take one more hit before I really need to do a whole lot. Let's see, what's Valkyrie going to do? Hum diddly do. you are going to do nothing. Wow, nice, okay. Eh, well, now we know. Yes, yes, try your silencing. It's not going to work. I've come prepared. And I'm going to heal up again. In essence, because Cecilia can't really dish out anything in the way of physical damage, this will pretty much be the path that you take in this battle, is unleashing a lot of magic and making sure to defend against her magic. Oh, man. Just a little bit away from actually being able to hit her with Ion again. But Holy should be able to do at least a little bit of damage. And, yeah, there we go. Okay. Evil! Yeah, yeah, whatever. Alrighty, do I have enough? I have enough, so I'm going to switch this last turn, put the Necronomicon back on myself, just so I can basically not just win this battle, but I can blow her little devilly rear end back into Kingdom Come. So, go ahead, Ion Power, the shackles are off. Kill her with every little bit you've got. You are dead, Elizabeth. You have fallen to my own power and a really souped up Cecilia. Which, I guess I probably should have done that beforehand and made it a shorter fight, but oh well, lesson learned. Good bit of experience, no money. Ah, uh, we won't boo this time though. We got Rudy back, hehe. <laughs> Be strong, Rudy. You're not alone. A lot of people care about you because you care about others. <gasps> now, now I understand. 
I have always hated myself for being the princess of Edelhide. I always thought that people would only see me as a princess. I wasn't being hated. My selfish thoughts were keeping people away from me. I finally found out by watching Rudy. If you want to be loved by someone, you have to love other people yourself. The goddess idol shatters. And we get Raftina. I am Raftina, the guardian of the love, the love that people have lost. Your cries have been heard. Princess, why do you risk your life for your dear friend? At first, I was doing it because I'm the princess and the shaman of the guardians. But now I do it because I love Philgaia, because I love my friends. You've learned the true meaning of love. If you need my powers, call upon me in the name of love. And so, as a result, we get the Love Rune. The first of the three most powerful runes in the game that we can pick up. And everything goes all white and everything flashes and... We fall asleep, apparently. In a really uncomfortable position. Wow, I fell asleep with no punctuation. Rudy! And there he is, all whole again. This isn't a dream? You won't laugh at me? Call me a space cadet or anything like that, would you? <laughs> I was dreaming. A dream about Rudy. Rudy had the same dream? Yeah, this is where the whole silent protagonist thing kind of gets a little odd, but it still works generally. Wow, I now know the burden you carry. You are truly strong of heart and in might. I would have been crushed by the sadness. If we did share the same dream, then what do you remember? What happened? There's the real me, not the princess. All I could think of was saving you. And she gets all red in the face and Jack shows up to rescue her from her embarrassment, I guess. You made us worry, kid. You look great. And here comes everybody else because, you know, we, I guess we have to have everybody in the room. I'm going back to Phil Gaia. I can't fight, but the least I can do is try to protect our home. Alright, so we have everybody back in the party. Hooray! So first off, let's get Rudy equipped with all of his best stuff and make sure that everything is on, including the warrior vest and the hyper gear. And let's also be sure to go ahead and give Cecilia the love rune, which is in essence, in the story sense, basically destined to be hers. Because you see, it ups virtually everything of hers. Vitality, sorcery, response, defense, magic resistance, and parry. So yeah, it's hers. And finally, talk to Vassim. Rudy is unaware of the powers that sleep inside him. Once Rudy accepts himself for what he is, the power will awaken. Let me talk to Rudy. As though the hint wasn't broad enough already, go ahead and switch him into the party, and... Your body is not human. That's the truth. If you can accept this fact and grow beyond it, you will be able to produce unbelievable power from your arms. The synchronization beyond normal limits will produce a runaway destructive force. I know you will use this power wisely. Bring the future to us, Rudy. Vassim's words have awakened power sleeping deep inside Rudy's body. And we get Rudy's final force ability, the Fury Shot, which is really, really good. Basically, it is lock on and triple power in the same force ability. It is level four, so it's gonna take some doing to get to it, but if you do use it, it is incredibly effective. Your body represents a past that we are trying to forget. The war with the demons in the Homecross project. The Guardian Blade. You're the Pandora's box, which of course we read about in De La Metallica. It is in essence symbolized by Rudy. And we're done with that. Now, one thing I always did wonder about actually, after 
This operation on Rudy, and I'm just sort of talking to cover up the fact that I'm going up here to blow up this box. What happened to the Guardian Blade that he forged? Or, I guess in that case, if Vassim did not technically forge the Guardian Blade per se, perhaps he forged it in essence in Rudy's body? I don't know, that's something I've always wondered, and it's something that the game doesn't really make clear. Now, you notice this funky little thing here in the box, pick it up, and it is a secret tool. Now, we can't use that just yet, but we will be able to use that relatively soon. So, let's go ahead and make our way out of here. And there are one or two things that I wanted to do before leaving the L Dimension. Mainly, I did not want to do that, I wanted to go ahead and teleport over to Tarjan Village. Because I think we picked everything up there, but I do want to make sure that we didn't miss anything before we head out. And I think I forgot where Tarjan Village was on the map, so I was going to try to show off the other island, but oh well. Anyway, let's go ahead and take the radar. And we did miss something. All right, time to run around and huh, find stuff then. But now, of course, you see Rudy is in control of himself, and he can do pretty much whatever he darn well pleases, I guess. And I am going to run into lots of trees again. Hooray me. But now, we have the party back again, of course, and we have gone through, well, in a lot of ways, quite the trauma, really. Now, in essence... Oh. Does seriously miss... Wow, go me. Okay, uh, anything else? No, huh. Wow, all right, I, uh... Ah, like I said, RPG 101, I might want to take a refresher course, I think. Anyhow, that's pretty much that. And I'm going to go ahead and show off the island one more time, as this is, as I mentioned, our final moments in the L Dimension. And you see as we run over here, of course, we've got the forest mound right there. You look across and you can see... Again, not that much, but you can see that other island over there, which was on the L Dimensions super map. So, I think actually I'm going to go ahead and leave it here since we've had lots of nice little story progress. So next time on Wild Arms, we're going to make our way back to Phil Gaia and see, well, where to go from there. So thank you guys for joining me, and I will see y'all later.